good morning to all uh, today i am going to talk on uh, the genus ersinia uh, which is another uh, organism uh, sorry the genus causing for some uh, genetic disease like uh, plague and two other important organisms like um, ersinia entercolitica and zooentercolitica which are responsible for uh, um the food born diarrhea and uh, this was uh, this has got a long history and uh, it's very important uh, genetic uh, disease of course nowadays even though the cases are not seen it has got its own uh, a role in the human health and the learning objectives of this topic uh, we have to learn about the history of organism and the epidemiological aspects of disease and the most important aspect is the transmission of the disease disease burden in man and animal the treatment aspects and preventive aspects of the disease we have to learn and the as i mentioned already there are three important uh, pathogenic species are there even though there are 11 species are there in the genus uh, ersinia and uh, the one is ersinia uh, pestis which is responsible for a systemic disease known as plague and another is the ersinia entrocolitica sorry that is spelling mistake is there entrocolitica causing for the entrocolitis which is an entropathogen another is uh, ersinia pseudo tuberculosis which is another important uh, entropathogen the disease almost resembles to the disease produced by ersinia entrocolitica and the plague uh, history they, it has got uh, the long and important role throughout the history it has caused several pandemics and epidemics which have led to large number of deaths uh justinian's uh, constantinople pandemic which was lasted from 540 ad to 590 ad uh, and resulted in approximately 10000 deaths per day and uh, uh, and it has got its own role in the fall of roman empire in 14th century plague was carried out uh, carried from the outbreaks in india and china to italy by merchants returning home during this time venice instituted a 40 day period of uh, detainment uh, for docking ships uh, which gave us what is known as quarantine and uh, despite uh, this efforts plague quickly spread throughout uh, all of europe and uh, over one third of uh, european population uh, died during uh, this particular uh, pandemic during the 1346 to uh, nearly 1400 and this was popularly known as a black death pandemic the decline in population aided in the fall of the feudal system of government another important plague epidemic occurred in um, 1665 although limited to england it killed approximately uh, 1 lakh uh, people out of 5 lakh people who were affected with this disease uh, and during this outbreak some modern public health practices were initiated that is um, the reporting about this disease and uh, closing up of homes that's what what we are doing now in the form of lockdown for covid-19 and discovery of this organism it was identified in uh, 18 uh, 94 uh, during the Hong Kong outbreak Alexander Ersin yes, the right side you can see the photograph of him Alexander Ersin I mean identified this gram negative bacillus and uh, 1896 the anti serum was developed against this particular uh, uh, bacterium then uh, below that photograph you can see the hut these were the isolation uh, houses or rooms for the people who are suffering with this particular uh, disease on those days and uh, plague uh, has got uh, its own importance 
and uh, the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, uh, Division of Quarantine is empowered to detain and uh, uh, the patients and contain the patients related to this particular disease. And uh, this is a reportable disease uh, in the US, almost, almost, of course, the almost all the world. It's in a uh, plague is in a reportable disease. Um, all US cases uh, have to be reported to the WHO. Not only that, in all the countries in the, anywhere in the world have to report them um, to the WHO and the CDC Division of Quarantine. And Yersinia pestis, uh, the proper uh, the organism, um, if you come to that, this is a fam belongs to the family Enterobacteriaceae, which is a gram negative pleomorphic cocobacillus, which gives a safety pin appearance. Of course, the right side upper photograph, uh, you can see the uh, gram negative nature of the bacilli, whereas uh, below the photograph will show. The arrow mark is showing this safety pin appearance because of the uh, increased uh, staining at the polar ends. It's an aerobic and facultative anaerobic organism which is intracellular organism. And uh, there is only one serotype is there that is Ersinia pestis which consists of three biovars and it's destroyed by the sunlight and also uh, in the air within one hour they can be killed. And in frozen state, these organisms can survive for years together. And the transmission, uh, these organisms uh, will be transmitted by the bite of rat flea. It's a scientific name for this is Xenos, I mean, uh, Xenopsilla cuopis, uh, which you can see the upper uh, photograph. You can see the uh, magnified or uh, magnified view of this particular uh, 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 vector and the below that you can see the, with the arrow and all in the infected animal uh, the size of this particular uh, rat flea is shown by the um, arrow mark and uh, the people will get transmitted because of the contact with the infected animal uh, with their tissues and body fluids and bite of the rat flea also is responsible for this one and they can um, this bacteria can enter into the body through the broken skin also and these cases are uh, epidemic in Asia Africa and uh, South American countries and uh, the aerosols and droplets also infectious by means of inhalation the human cases are commonly seen during the months of April uh, to the number and disease cycles are seen in uh, two cycles. One is uh, sylvatic cycle, which is um, uh, which is uh, transmitted through the wild rats, and the urban um, cycle, which is uh, transmitted through the domestic rats. So the re reservoirs for this Yersinia pestis were the rock and ground squirrels, and uh, prairie dogs, mice, and other rodents. This disease is seen in the form of enzootic. Uh, also epizootic among the rodents. Uh, enzootic means the, the same uh, species will get infected. In epizootic form, the other species of the rodents also gets infected and cause for the mass death of those animals which is a great threat to the human beings. If the human beings comes in contact with these uh, uh, dead animals, then the people may acquire the infections. <coughs> This is the life cycle of uh, Yersinia pestis. Uh, there you can see the, the ground squirrel as amplifying force. So, uh, by, from this ground squirrel, the flea will get infected and uh, it bites the uh, rats or rodents and uh, transmits the infection. And this uh, rat flea uh, can infect the chipmunks and other animals also. And uh, this infected rat flea uh, can bite the rats and other animals, which is shown on the right side, uh, cats, dogs, and human beings also, and it can uh, transmit the disease. Not only that, the dead animals, uh, when the human beings are comes in contact with the uh, dead animals, which were infected with this particular uh, bacterium and dead, 
either body secretions or the body tissues of these dead animals are infectious to the human beings. After an incubation period of 2 to 6 days in case of one type of plague that is bubonic plague, uh, the clinical manifestations will appear. Whereas in case of pneumonic plague which occurs in the form of uh, uh, respiratory uh, plague, uh, the incubation period is uh, less than that. That would be around 1 to 4 days. And plasmids uh, and virulence factors of Yersinia pestis. The F1 surface antigen which can inhibit the phagocytosis and uh, this also confers the protective immunity. That means the antibodies which are produced against this F1 surface antigen uh, will give the protection. And another virulence determinants are V and W antigens. Um, this is all, uh, these are also responsible for the uh, uh, responsible for the uh, inhibition of the phagocytic activity and campus immunity and uh, plague toxin uh, this also participates in this particular uh, uh, disease manifestation by avoiding the immune system to combat with this particular bacterium and also this plague toxin is responsible for cytotoxicity. Uh, and uh, type 3 uh, secretory system, this type 3 secretory system is responsible for injection of the uh, proteins, uh, uh, proteins are responsible for their pathogenicity which are again responsible for the inhibition of phagocytic activity. Next one is the plasminogen activator which converts the plasminogen to plasmin which dissolves the clot and uh, responsible for uh, bacterial spread. It also degrades the C3B and the C5A which are important to complement components and responsible for the dissemination of uh, bacilli from the intradermal uh, site of uh, infection. And they also prevent the opsonization and phagocytic migration. And the human plague is seen in three forms. One is bubonic plague, septicemic plague, and pneumonic plague. Of course, pneumonic plague uh, may be the primary or secondary type. That means the directly the lungs may get in, for infected with this bacteria and cause for the pneumonic plague, which is known as primary uh, pneumonic plague. But sometimes what happens is this bubonic plague gets spread uh, into the body and infects the respiratory system and it's known as pneumonic plague. And if you see the bubonic uh, plague, which is a most uh, common form of the plague, nearly 80% of the cases are seen uh, in this form. As I mentioned already, the incubation period is around uh, uh, 2 to uh, 6 days. The clinical uh, signs and symptoms are fever, Malaise, chills and headache and vomiting, abdominal pain and petechia seen in the body. And uh, you, at the right side, the photograph in axillary area, you can see the uh, enlarged um, the lymph nodes. And uh, this is the below photograph, you can see the lymph nodes which are involved in the uh, groin. And uh, these are swollen lymph nodes with severe pain. The common areas are the axillary area, groin and cervical region. If untreated, the mortality would be around 50 to 60 percent of the infected. Okay. And uh, septicemic plague, uh, this uh, primarily uh, uh, septicemic plague, if the bacteria directly enters in the blood and cause for disease, or it may be secondary uh, from the bubonic form of the plague. Uh, this septicemic plague is very rapid in onset. And the clinical signs and symptoms are signs of sepsis uh, with or with, uh, without bibos. You can see bibos are nothing but a swollen, painful lymph nodes of that particular region. And next one is the necrosis of extremities. There you can see on the right side, you can see the fingers, how the necrosed and uh, the black, they turn up into the black color because of the microthrombi formation of the vessels and which blocks the capillaries and results in a kind of gangrenous formation. That's why it's known as black death. In untreated cases, mortality would be 100% of the cases. And next one is pneumonic plague. That's incubation period is one to uh, four days. 
and uh, the primarily the organism would be inhaled or in the secondarily it the spread from the septicemic uh, uh, farm the clinical signs uh, or the fever chills headache uh, productive cough and hemoptysis and respiratory distress would be there and if you see the chest x ray on right side you can see the chest x ray you can see the bilateral uh, alveolar infiltrates yet with this arrows you can see the uh, uh, bilateral alveolar infiltrates and uh, in this particular cases in case of pneumonic plague the person to person transmission also possible and the lab diagnosis of plague uh, the samples have to be collected after wearing the ppe that is personal protective equipment the people should wear the mask n95 mask goggles gloves and uh, the uh, head cap has to be worn and then only we have to collect the uh, collect either blood or sputum or lymph node aspirates from the infected uh, uh, individuals and uh, gm stain of this particular uh, specimen will show the pink bacilli uh, with bipolar uh, staining which gives a safety pin appearance which was also discussed in the morphology slide and immunofluorescence stain uh, by using anti f1 antibodies that means the antibodies which are produced against the f1 antigens and by using this anti f1 antibodies uh, we can do the immunofluorescence staining technique to demonstrate this um, uh, bacilli uh, uh, and the next one is on the isolation part if you see uh, we can culture this organism on nutrient agar also which can produce small delicate uh, uh, transparent uh, colonies and blood agar with sodium azide will show the dark brown colonies because of hemodigestion the right side you can see the blood agar which has to be incorporated with sodium azide and the dark brown uh, colonies you can see because of hemodigestion and mekanke's agar will show the poor growth uh, where you can see the uh, uh, colorless uh, colonies almost uh, you can't make out any colonies on this medium except a little decolorization where the arrow mark is being shown and the third one is the, if you grow these organisms and the broth uh, which has to be which is laid with an oil or ghee so the right side you can see a test tube with the broth and the upper uh, layer has been has to be uh, uh, upper portion has to be layered with uh, oil or ghee broth ghee and the growth they will show by hanging down into the broth like stalactites that's why it's known as stalactite growth see if, if from there there's a color has been given a red color has been given to that from above downwards you can see the growth in the oil or ghee broth this growth is known as stalactite growth and uh, the serological tests are available for the detection of antibodies against f1 antigen uh, by using elisa method fourfold rise in the paid sera will always uh, uh, confirm the diagnosis so this particular uh, diagnosis has to be uh, uh, discriminated or differentiated from the another annual diseases like tularemia and hunter viral disease and also the streptococcal and staphylococcal aureus infections the treatment is the early treatment is always uh, mandatory for the survival of the patient and if you initiate the early treatment the survival would be nearly 100% and uh, at the same time we have to give the supportive care in case of septicemic plague and also the pneumonic plague the antibiotics to be given are high aminoglycosides to be given but the most appropriate drugs are doxycycline <coughs> tetracyclines and chloramphenicols especially doxycycline will be given at the time of epidemic or pre or uh, epidemic periods and the penicillins and cephalosporins are not at all effective don't think that cephalosporins are broad spectrum antibiotics they may kill this bacteria and the cephalosporins are not having any role in the killing of this particular bacterium and if you see the plague in animals the host species like rodents uh, lagomorphs uh, will get infected 
and no clinical symptoms and the signs are seen. Other mammals are most uh, infections, in, uh, among the other mammals, infections are most of the times the infections are incidental and felines are very susceptible, especially house cats, uh, wild cats and wood rats are uh, highly infectious and ungulates like camels, the, also the occasional infections are reported among them. So the road, not only the rodents and also the cats and the camels also uh, and infect the, uh, the infect the plague bacterium and they may uh, transmit the infectious agents from them to the human beings. And if you see the plague in cats and dogs, uh, no reported human cases from cats prior to 1977. But first time in 1998, 23 human cases uh, were uh, detected from the infected cats. Out of them, five were uh, died. And uh, they can transfer the disease to the human beings, especially to the uh, to their owners, that's the pet owners and veterinary uh, staff, uh, veterinary doctors are to their staff. Uh, most of the times, uh, it would be in the form of pneumonic uh, plague. And also it can be transmitted to the fleas bite and also by the scratch of the animals. The clinical presentation is similar to the human beings uh, among the human I mean, among the animals also. Dogs rarely suffer with the disease. So uh, the attribution of these infected dogs to the human disease is uh, a bit rare. And prevention and control, the isolate infected or suspected animals and also the contacts uh, to be avoided with those animals of the infected individuals. Animal handlers should use the PPE like surgical mask or um, N95 mask and gloves, eye protection or uh, the face shield has to be used. And flea control measures are very very important uh, uh, and also the, as far as the animals and cats is concerned and en environment disinfection also very very important if you see in the, the right side photographs uh, the upper one is these uh, rodents will uh, uh, harbor in the bushy areas so bushy areas has to be um, then has to be uh, uh, sprayed with the uh, uh, some kind of uh, what is it called uh, pesticide and the rodent burrowing areas also has to be injected with uh, the insecticides. And the, another thing is um, the public health education. Um, to public, we have to tell that the time of epidemic with this Yersinia pestis or in the time of plague, the public uh, also has to be educated uh, about the dead animal with this particular uh, disease. And the vaccine uh, for the lab and field workers is preferable and the killed vaccine is available in India. Two doses has to be given at an interval of uh, one to three months uh, duration and third dose has to be given at six month period. And prophylactic drug recommended only in the pneumonic plague and co-trimoxazole, trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole combination is drug of choice for this particular purpose. So the Yersinia pestis is considered as a bio weapon. Uh, to say this as bio weapon, there are pros and cons are there. The pros to, for this statement are it's relatively, relatively easy for uh, mass production and it can be delivered in aerosol form uh, 100 to 500 um, uh, this um, the bacteria can produce the pneumonic plague. And the pneumonic plague causes a rapid onset of the disease with high uh, mortality rate uh, with epidemics. And the cons for this statement are plague is fragile bacterium and dies after about uh, one hour. And manufacturing an effective uh, bio weapon using Yersinia pestis would require advanced knowledge and technology. And in India, uh, 1994, in the B district of Maharashtra and Gujarat, 60,000 cases were occurred with 60 deaths. And at that time, the rats were found as source. 
and uh, the uh, where they are harboring in the uh, grain stock piles and it begins in the form of bubonic uh, farm most of the cases were seen in the bubonic farm at that particular episode and it develops into the pneumonic plague which was responsible for death of uh, I mean 60 deaths among 60000 affected individuals again in uh, 2002 in india some cases were identified which was started in roru district of himachal pradesh and cases were seen in kolar which is um, a border of uh, uh, the andhra pradesh tamil nadu and karnataka and uh, um, and also the bead again the maharashtra bead district of maharashtra induced widespread the panic about this particular uh, uh, and the next one is intra Yersinia intracolitica, which is again a gram to coca bacilli. Uh, the important point to remember is uh, they are motile at 22 degrees centigrade, and the optimum uh, temperature to grow these organisms is 22 uh, to 29 degrees centigrade. So absolutely, it won't grow at 37 degrees centigrade. And the children, the age group around 24 months, are common sufferers. And in this particular organisms, outer membrane protein uh, uh, is uh, more virulent. The outer membrane protein is more virulent and it's responsible for its pathogenicity. And mode of transmission is ingestion, uh, uh, though the contaminated, th sorry, the, through the contaminated uh, uh, food and water. And it infects the terminal ileum of the infected individuals, especially the pears patches, and induces inflammatory infiltrates into the pears patches responsible for uh, severe infl inflammatory process of the terminal ileum. It may cause for the bacteremia and abscess in the lower quadrant of abdomen. These are the salient features of intracolitica and pathogenesis and clinical manifestations. It produces enterotoxin similar to the heat uh, stable toxin of E. coli. Uh, even though they produce enterotoxin uh, they never uh, it won't uh, contributes much for its pathogenesis but only outer membrane protein is responsible for its much of its pathogenicity incubation period is four to uh, six days and clinical presentation uh, seen in three farms one is enterocolitis farm another is pseudo appendicitis farm the third one is extra intestinal farm so in enterocolitis farm you can see the watery a mucoid diarrhea most of the times but sometimes you can see in the form of bloody diarrhea other clinical manifestations like colicky abdominal pain and fever and pus cells are seen in stool sample and uh, pseudo appendicitis farm people will suffer with fever abdominal pain and also the tenderness and uh, uh, a mass in right uh, lower quadrant of abdomen Again, the pus cells are seen in the stool sample. And extra intestinal manifestations like cellulitis, conjunctivitis, osteomyelitis, and pneumonia are seen. These are the three different forms of this particular uh, bacterial infection. But among them, enterocolitis form is very common form of this disease manifestation. And the enterocolitis, the culture takes uh, two days at uh, incubation of 22 degrees centigrade. And on Makanki, you can see the pinpoint uh, colorless colonies. On the right side, you can see the photograph also. And on blood agar, uh, this bacteria will show the non hemolytic colonies. On blood agar, on the right side, again, you see there where you can see the non hemolytic colonies on blood agar. And uh, the another uh, selective medium is CAN medium, that is Cephalodin, Ergasan, and Naobiasin medium, where you can see the uh, colonies like uh, hammered copper appearance. The arrow will show the how the hammered copper appearance. Just if you uh, uh, if you uh, hammer the copper coin, how they appears at periphery, the uh, same appearance you can see here also. And the drug of choice is uh, tetracycline or you can go for cotrimoxazole. Cotrimoxazole or tetracycline. In case of tetracycline uh, uh, contraindication, you can go for the cotrimoxazole. And this is about uh, the Yersinia. 
three important uh, species that is Yersinia pestis, Yersinia androcolitica, and uh, the Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. Thank you.